Hi, this is Gabor Sabo from the Pearl Maven TV show. With me is Jay Hanna, who is the uh, hi, who is the um, what is his is are you the the king of the pearl <laughs> mongers or what are you? <laughs> Uh, what am I? I am the, the chief ticket monkey of Pearl Mongers International. That's a very good title that I came up with myself. Oh, great. What does that mean? Um, what does that mean? So whenever, so Pearl Mongers, if people don't know, uh, is uh, www.pm.org. And it's a website where all the uh, people interested in Pearl and Pearl development in a local geographical area can all uh, get together and figure out, hey, let's get together and have pizza or coffee or beer or could stare at code together in the same place, uh, which is often very useful if you're new to any given community. A local user group is obvious, is uh, one way that you can learn a bunch of things really quickly through immersion rather than trying to figure everything out uh, via books. So, uh, you know, I got started a long time ago, I guess, and uh, I've always found it very helpful to find experts that happen to be local, and I can actually sit in a room and just kind of observe. Uh, and that's kind of what ProMonger is all about, is geography is important sometimes. Hey, let's make it easy for if I move to Boston, I want to find all the ProMongers or all the social uh, social ProMongers anyway uh, in Boston. Then I can uh, find the, Pearl, the ProMongers Boston group and join their mailing list or IRC channels or whatever it is that they organize, and there you go. So anyways, Chief Ticket Monkey, my job is just to uh, take all of the inbound, we use Request Tracker, Request Tracker uh, tickets and issues and help people in IRC that are setting up groups for the first time and all that good stuff and uh, just push that through the various uh, systems and pull the levers and push the knobs and et cetera. So that's kind of what I do. It's, okay. it's pretty fun. I get I get uh, emails from people who's for whom English is not their native language, and I try to figure out what they're saying <laughs> and try to help them through the process of, oh, well, the, we are Pearl Mongers. We uh, can provide these services for you if you like. Uh, you don't have to use us. You can use whatever uh, hosting service you prefer, uh, et cetera. But we like to build the network. And if you go to pm.org, you can see a global map and scroll through it, and there's uh, hundreds of groups, so it's pretty slick. So you're in touch with all kind of people around the world. Are you in constant touch with them or just that just for the they have a request and then that's it or do you help them more? Uh, mostly uh, as chief ticket monkey I just uh, keep track of the hey this is broken I'm having a problem updating my website I'm having a problem updating the mailing list uh, those sorts of things I need my password reset and that's kind of what I do so I don't join. I am on the mailing lists of several of the groups that are geographically very close to me. So I live in Omaha, Nebraska, and Kansas City, Missouri is very close to me, and my parents live there. And so I'm on the KC mailing list. Um, and I kind of try to make sure that their websites are up and Des Moines, Iowa is working and that kind of thing. But um, in general, I'm not super active. I just have way too many hobbies. <laughs> too many hobbies, too many interests. Too many of them are computer related. <laughs> Do you? What kind of hobbies? Okay. Oh, that was too uh, high. <laughs> Do yeah. higher ball. Okay, what kind of hobbies? Give me one. Mot two. Yeah, motorcycling. So my my hair, as you, you can see how cool my, my yeah. helmet head is. Okay. Uh, so, you know, I rode, rode my bike this morning. Uh, we just started work at my day job on a new client who's East Coast, and they start early in the morning. And I'm not uh, naturally a very morning-oriented person. So at, at 5 a.m., I was up riding my motorcycle in, and it was 55 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know what that is, Celsius. No but idea. it was... <laughs> yeah, it was not hot <laughs> on my motorcycle ride in, but yeah, I'm big into motorcycles. I've got a uh, a road bike that I ride, and then I've got two dirt bikes that I just got a brand new dirt bike this well 2010, so I'm excited about that. So if you follow me on Twitter or anything, you'll see pictures of me losing motorcycle races constantly. But I have fun. Do you have a a, a camera for that, a GoPro or something similar? No, I don't. I have no idea. I don't. <laughs> I ride with a bunch of guys who know what they're doing, so they have the GoPros mounted. Oh, okay. And so there is lots of footage of me on YouTube where what you see is this guy going 100 miles an hour through the woods, and then he passes me because I'm only going 20 miles an hour. So you see me briefly as I'm – I think I'm going fast, and then these guys go around me at, like, Mach 2. So, uh, yeah, I'm not – I'm not a very not a very aggressive 
a motorcycle racer, but it, it's fun to get out there and uh, putz around in the woods. I like woods riding. I'm not a motocross kind of guy. So, But that, that sounds fun. I mean, yeah. yeah, it's a good way to get out away I, from a computer. I mean, it's important that you have hobbies where you're not sitting at a keyboard all day. Well, I am sitting at a keyboard all day, but then I try to get out every weekend <laughs> and do something else. <laughs> so how long does such a trip take? I mean, an hour, two? Or yeah, you go the, for the whole day? Or you go yeah, for the whole day? The, I mean, we're in the middle in, of rural America, um, but there's only certain places you can ride, and so you have to find someone who is willing to let you ride on their land. And just riding around in circles in a cornfield is no fun. So you want to find land that's up in the hills uh, where there's trees and stuff to dodge. It makes it more interesting. <laughs> um, so mostly we ride private land that's about an hour and a half from here. So door to door, you know, it's it's about an hour and a half. So, you, yeah, you'll spend a good six hours uh, going riding. So I just went on Sunday, and it was way too slick. That was a big mistake. Everyone warned me it was going to be too slick, and I didn't believe them, so I went anyway and regretted it. <laughs> But I, at least I got out of the house. <laughs> um, that's good. Back to the promongers then. Uh, so you're um, helping them, but you're also running, or, or you used to run your own own group, right? Or are you still? Uh, yeah, I, I still run the Omaha promongers. I'm the de facto group leader. Mm -hmm. um, a few years ago, uh, we had the same four or five people coming to all the meetings, and it was me giving the presentation every month, and that got old. And so what happened was I said, hey, guess what? We're going to go to the Omaha Dynamic Language User Group meetings, and we're going to convince all of those people who are using you know, Ruby or Python or whatever, we're going to convince those people that Perl is awesome, and we're going to do presentations, and we're going to, you know. So we went there, and then immediately... Uh, almost immediately, the group leader of the Omaha Dynamic Language Users Group got a job in San Francisco, so he left. Okay. And they elected a new leader. And that guy got a job in Chicago, so he left. <laughs> and then they elected me. And so now I'm the group leader of the Omaha Dynamic Language Users Group. So you just took over the whole group, right? <laughs> I didn't mean to. I just was the only oh, guy that was like, hey, we should still have meetings. And they were like, all right. So yeah, but it's fun. It's, so it's a good way to keep track of lots of languages. So basically, all the Python and, and, and Ruby people left, and all the Perl Perl. <laughs> no, no, all the people didn't leave. The leaders who happened to be oriented towards those languages left. So we we have meetings all the time with Ruby How and many, stuff. In. And and what kind of do you have presentations there, or or it's mostly yeah. social? No presentations. Yeah, mostly tech meetings, and then we have beer or whatever. So the um, the place that we're currently meeting is a co-working center, which I'm sitting in right now. Um, I don't know if you can see. So there's a TARDIS behind me, if you have any Doctor Who fans. Okay. I know that. that. I'm probably... Uh, now yeah. we're going to, have, in, going to invite all the Doctor Who friends, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I actually sit in front of a, a Doctor Who time machine, um, and we can drink beer here. So what happens during the meetings is we just throw a projector over here, and there's two screens. I've got this huge IMAX, so I can't, like, spin the camera around easily. But there's two screens, and so we'll do these two screens. i got to stay in frame, sorry. Um, and then a projector on the wall over here. And so we'll stare at source code, and we've got beer in the fridge and uh, and drink whatever. Uh if people are in the mood, so ordering pizza or whatever. I'm, I, I don't do pizza since I'm on this paleo diet, so I don't do that anymore. But uh, we had barbecue the last month, so that was fun. <laughs> so that's interesting, actually, because I, I'm, I'm mostly involved in, in a Pearl Monger group, which is not it's, – it's about Pearl mostly, although we do have uh, all, the, all kind of presentations about other stuff. So we, we used to have um, a series of presentations, we called it Foreign Languages, and then we had <laughs> a, a talk about, I don't know, Python and Tickle and I don't know, whatever, it was a couple of years ago. But um, if I understand that in this group, it's not really a Perlmongers group, it's, it's, um, it has all kinds of presentations, right? Well, it's both. So I, I like to call it the Omaha Dynamic Language Users Group featuring the Omaha Perlmongers is how I, I phrase it. So if you go to odlug.org, O-D-L-U-G.org, that's the Omaha Dynamic Language Users Group. But we're also om, or sorry, omaha.pm.org. And I have, there's two email lists, one for 
everybody that cares about any languages, and then another mailing list that is just Perl specific. And so I try to keep the Perl stuff rolling specifically Perl wise, but then I'm I'm also, you know, I I don't know. I kind of feel like there's a huge .NET Microsoft technology group here with all kinds of subspecialties, and they'll get 60 people in a room to talk about Microsoft stuff. Then there's a huge Java group, and they get lots of people in a room talking about Java, and that's great. Um, but it's also nice to have somewhere that's friendly to everything else, you know, and that's kind of what I feel like we, we try to be. So I've been learning a lot of Scala recently, which is kind of in the Java stack. Um, and maybe I should hang out with the Java guys more often, but we do lots of Scala at odlug.org. <laughs> so. Okay. And um, so how many people are there in, the, in these meetings? Oh, it's pretty small. It's usually like eight. So every once in a while we'll get a celebrity in and we'll like 20 people will show up. So. And but, how's, the, how's the mix of the talks? So you're talking about Scala and then is Perl, how, how much Perl is present there? How much is Python? How others? Do you have a feeling of, of what is the division between the languages? Um, yeah, I don't really off the top of my head. I'd have to go back through the, the history of the it's an open invite forum, and I, I try to have a uh, lightning talk format kind of open to everybody all the time. And every month, it's very casual. It's like, hey, what do we got going? So I think if we look at the website today, what does it say? Oh, well, it talks about our last meeting last week. I need to update the website. So we had some BioPearl stuff uh, that was just presented by Scott McGrath, which was really cool last month. And then I did some Scala things. We've got a Git workshop coming up. And then 3.js, a 3D JavaScript engine. So those, and then it says you presenting whatever you're excited about. So we're, <laughs> we're always trying to get new people to come in and just do five minutes, you know, and hopefully that's a gateway uh, into doing longer presentations and showing us some of the cool stuff they're excited about. It's, it's really about what are you interested in? What do you, what do you want to talk about? Because it, it feels, I mean, I've, I've got friends in the Java group and things, so I don't want to sound negative about it, but sometimes in the Microsoft group and in like an Oracle group or in a Java group, it feels like people, their bosses told them they had to be there. And that's the bummer. So that's, that's, that's strange because it's like a social thing. Yeah. I, I, I am really interested in having whoever is excited about whatever they're excited about come and present to us whatever it is they're excited about. And, you know, that's exciting is to see people passionate about whatever they're interested in. Uh, have you invested in, in, in promoting this group or I mean, it's pretty small eight people, especially oh, if yeah. you're talk, talking about several languages? Right. Well, Omaha, Nebraska is a fairly small town. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, I've been the de facto leader for 10, 12 years now, something long time. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, there's lots of user groups here, actually. There's about 40 user groups, and I go to several of them. Um, and so whatever your niche is that you're currently really excited about, there's probably a user group in town that you can you can join in Omaha. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it'd be nice to get more people to show up, uh, but that's, you know, the perpetual problem, and I hear this from lots of people with you, having contact with the Pearl Mongers International, it's yeah. not easy getting people to show up month after month, year after year after year. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, so. The question, what, what new thing can you, can you show probably? And um, what really is the value in there? So, so what's the value in, 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 have, in going to these meetings? So why, would, why, would, why would someone go, go to this meeting? Well, it used to be, so I can, I can speak for myself probably, it used to be that my motivation was that I was working in a corporate environment where what we were allowed to expose ourselves to and what we were allowed to, um, what technology sets we were allowed to engage with was kind of limited and people weren't super excited about trying new things ever. And so user groups for me at the time were a way to kind of get out of the box and see, make sure that I can see what's going on out there. Because if things are really cool, things are happening in Ruby on Rails, I want to make sure that our stack, whatever that stack happens to be, can do whatever that cool thing is, right? And if that thing 
uh, isn't in the Perl space yet, which usually it is. Usually we've stolen all the good ideas from everybody. Um, but if it's not there, <laughs> then I want to know that and I want to challenge you know, the community or whoever or do it myself, uh, submit the thing that I'm, you know, whatever my itch is that I, I want to scratch, I want to make sure that I know what those things are. So by seeing other people's entirely different development environments, uh, you can you can get a good feel for that. Like I saw, I mean, uh, what was that? I saw a really cool stack. A guy was running all in IntelliJ, and I've been just using Vim forever. So I saw a guy using IntelliJ extremely rapidly, doing really quick uh, Scala development in that uh, IDE, and I was just yeah. impressed. I was like, wow, you're you've really got this thing tuned, and it, it it's just a reminder to keep our uh, tool sets uh, current or somewhat current, I guess. Actually, that's something that that um, I sort of miss, or I would I don't know where to to find. Maybe uh, is to is to learn from people to see how other people work. So when you go to a presentation of someone, then it's it's something that that's prepared, probably slides. It, it the, the content might be interesting, but it's something that that was, was that was prepared for the talk. And I would like to see a lot more about how, how people are actually typing things even, or what kind of features of their editor they are using. I don't know, what, what editor do you use? Vim or Emacs or? Well, I'm mostly in Vim. I've been uh, in Sublime Text 2 for a lot mm -hmm. of the Scala stuff. I've been pretty happy with that. Um, the Scala stuff also has uh, the Scala IDE, which is all Eclipse, <laughs> but uh, for the course Coursera class that I've been taking, uh, or that just ended, um, that IDE was pretty helpful. It has these worksheet things that are pretty slick. So, I'm a big fan of just Perl Dash D, and everyone says Perl Dash D is awful, and I love the hell out of it. So I don't know what everyone's problem with Perl Dash D is, but I've been using that command line in Vim forever. And you know, so for me, it's kind of a stretch. Syntax highlighting for my brain is kind of like, oh, what are all these colors? I can't stand it. But it does help when you switch to a new language or you switch to a huge environment that has you know, tens, hundreds of thousands of lines of code, getting oriented an IDE can help you with that in ways that the, you know, the command line tool can also do, but it's a little less convenient when you don't know where you're going. When you don't know what you're looking for, it's yeah. harder sometimes to, to find it. So yeah, I I, I, It's the same thing, I think, with GUI and, and command line. So GUI is more appropriate for something uh, new, if you're new for some, uh, in, in something. And then, yeah. So the the but the, the thing is that that I I would like to see how you work, how you type code, and uh, I don't know how do you edit stuff. Uh, not right now, maybe. Yeah, that's yeah. Maybe yeah, we can try to do that live right now. I'm not sure. Maybe we might need a couple of more screens here. <laughs> um, yeah. No, it's great. I mean, I I like to get people. When people come in with their laptops, with their environment that they develop in all the time, and show me a language I'm not familiar with, and they show me, "Hey, look at this! Look at this!" and you, I, I don't know. I, to me, that's just cool. <laughs> that's just cool to see how other people can tune their uh, development stacks and their tool chains in a way that usually. I am thinking the whole time, I'm like, oh, well, this is how I do that in the Perl space. But sometimes it's like, whoa, I can't do that right now in my Perl space. Am I behind in my Perl space tool set knowledge, or is this something that does not yet exist? And usually it's that I'm behind in my Perl <laughs> tool space knowledge. <laughs> so. Yeah, but I think every one of, every one of us is, is behind in some area. So... You go forward in something, and and then, then then but you miss out in other areas, even within within Perl, or within your yep. environment. And then uh, someone comes in with a different uh, way of setup that you haven't thought, or it, it's mostly me that I haven't thought. Um, <laughs> and, and then 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 I I would be able to learn from that. Uh, I'm definitely seeing. So yeah, that's that sounds that that sounds interesting, and that's that's something that that would be interesting to to see. I don't know online something. Um, good. Yeah, I personally tend towards uh, interactive sessions. Like I love workshop style presentations, and I love lightning talk style presentations. When when people have a slide deck that they have polished a thousand times, it 
often to me seems less engaging and less informative because a lot of times under that super slick slide deck, it doesn't really work that way because you'll go into there and you'll download that tool and you'll go click and it goes right and it just does not. <laughs> and it's always a balance between, you know, how, how, how many buttons do I have to activate how many wizards uh, and hey, these this tool did these automated things for me, and that's great. Except when it doesn't work, and then when it doesn't work, and you don't really know what's actually happening, then you're in more trouble than if you were doing it in a low level fashion uh, with the, the with the raw tools. So then I bounce back and forth all the time, like in in the in the Scala environment, the Eclipse Eclipse does a bunch of cool things, which is neat. But then you drop to the SBT tool, command line stuff. And sometimes that doesn't work. You have different problems in SBT than you have up in Scala space. So I love the fact that in Perl, in Vim, I know that it's always going <laughs> to work exactly the way that I programmed it incorrectly. And then I can fix it. <laughs> okay. Uh, last question. Back to the Perl mongers. Yeah. Uh, any help you need? From the people um, watching this? Yeah, no, right now it's been pretty quiet. Um, there is a Mongers uh, IRC group if you want to join uh, Pound Mongers in uh, Perl. Or, sorry, irc.perl.org. Yeah. Um, then you can just ask around. I only had one ticket like yesterday. I was. Uh, I got down to one ticket, so there wasn't that much to do. It'd be cool to automate the whole thing. Like the, um, we've been talking for a decade now about the <laughs> the entire the entire. This is the kind of you know this is one of a thousand ideas that I have that I just haven't gotten around to. Is um, all everything there is to know about all the Perl mongers worldwide all sits in an XML file, which is linked from the homepage, and you can see it. And it's all sitting in GitHub now. If you go to GitHub, it's all up there for a couple of years now. Um, so you would think that since everything there is to know is in XML, that you wouldn't need a chief ticket monkey like me, that you could make me completely obsolete, and that all you would have to do is say, refresh, and it would just spew out all the Apache configurations and all the mailman configurations, whatever, and I wouldn't have to be... You wouldn't need any ticket monkeys, let alone a chief ticket monkey. And... Um, that would be cool. So there's been a plot on my wiki called Deprecate the Humans Forever, and we just haven't gotten around to it. So if anyone's bored, uh, they can they can join up. Let me find the GitHub repo. I'm not sure where that is. I guess we can just put it on the link here uh, under the video later on. Or you want to say something about that? Um, no, it's, it's in here somewhere. I forget the... Yeah, I guess we'll uh, find it. The repo is www.pm.org. So it's in here somewhere. Oh, there we go. Okay, so it's github slash pearl org slash www.pm.org. Oh, Jay Hanna was in here 15 hours ago. He probably broke something. Don't trust that guy. He's trouble. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, great. Uh, thank you for this interview. Hey, you're welcome. It's, uh, great talking to you. I know that you're going to be at YFC, right? I am. Yeah, I'm going to be at the uh, training sessions before Yapsi, and I'm going to be at the training sessions after Yapsi. I, I work for Infinity Interactive, and we're doing... Uh, oh, yeah, uh, I wanted to ask that one. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're, we're doing Zero to Pearl stuff before Yapsi, and we're doing advanced moose training after Yapsi. And so I'll be helping John Anderson and Stephen Little uh, on both ends of the conference, just fetching them coffee or pizza or whatever they need. So, um, yeah, I'll be around. So, yeah, if, you, if you're coming to Yapsi and you haven't booked your flights yet and you might find the stuff before or after Yapsi interesting, make sure to check the schedule for the shoulder dates. So. <laughs> okay. So if, if this is going to come out before Yapsi, does this video... <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how long your post-interview editing process is, so maybe this is... Let's see. Okay, thank you very much, really, and um, see you at uh, Yapsi. Yeah, thanks, Gabor. So, this was Jay Hanna and Gabor Savo from the Pearl Maven TV show. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.